All right, y'all flip back to Exodus chapter 10. What I'm going to do now, or what we're going to do, if y'all don't mind, is we're just going to go through the Scripture and kind of look at some examples of what it says about light. And you'll find that many times light and darkness are in the same verse. And again, remember, this Bible is a comparison. This Bible teaches us a comparison. We see man's complete and utter failure, and we see God's perfect remedy in the Lord Jesus Christ, don't we? In man by nature is no light, and in God is no darkness. Therefore, we can't do it. The only way we can do it is he's going to have to give it to us. And to give it as a gift, you've got to quit trying to do it, don't you? Uh, to take a gift, you say, I can't, you sit back and receive. Hey, now, in Exodus 10, we're going to read here about something that says, verse 21, Israel is in Egypt. It says, the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, and there, uh, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. I mean, can you all imagine that? I've never been, but I had a friend that uh, uh, Miss Slater told me one time. She said she went in a cave somewhere on some little trip or whatever, you know, when he's, and said the lights went out while they were in that cave. And she told me, she said, literally you could feel the darkness. I've never been anywhere like that, but I believe, you know, it's thick darkness, right? It says, Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. You ever notice everything God does? He says it first, doesn't he? Well, we're right? uh, Exodus 10, 22. Now verse 23. They saw not one another. This is in Egypt. Neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. You mean to tell me God spoke and there was darkness on one group and light on another? And wait, God said something and one group went into pitch black and the other one's in the light. Now that's the example of the word of God. Today, we've got the Word of God, and for people that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the light starts to shine, and it shines more and more, doesn't it? But what about those that trust their own righteousness? This book's darkness to them. They can memorize it and not know what it's talking about. You know, I heard someone one time that had met, uh, they had a, uh, a holiness preacher named Dake. He wrote a, an annotated, he did all kind of stuff, but... He memorized the New Testament. He had an incredible memory. He died here about 25 years ago, I think. But anyway, I heard a man one time that knew he was in Pensacola at one of these revivals and went to meet him. And he said, it was fascinating. He said, sure enough, the man memorized the New Testament. He said he could just say to him, you know, 1 Corinthians 7, 20, boom, boy, the God spit it out. And he said that just fascinated him. He said he got up to leave, and before he left, he said, Sir, I want to ask you one more question. He said, yeah, he said, is there anything, any sin that you could do that would cause you to lose your salvation? And y'all know what that man said that had memorized the Bible? He said, oh, yeah. If I sin, if I backslide and sin, and I don't go to the Lord and, and confess it and beg Him for forgiveness, then, yeah, I'll go to hell. Now, folks, that's what most people believe today. What kind of salvation is that? Had that man memorized the Bible, did he know what it was talking about? You know, there's no one worse, and I know this from experience, no one worse to show you the truth than the one that thinks he's got the light and he's walking in darkness. Hey, hold your hand in Exodus. We'll come back. We'll go over to Romans 2. In Romans 2, we got a great example of this. In fact, me and Lonnie were just talking about this. <clears throat> Romans 2.17 Now, remember among the Roman church, don't ever let anyone tell you that Paul's converts were all Gentiles and all that. There's no truth to that. And in the Roman church, weren't even Paul's converts and they were mostly Jews anyway. But in Romans 2.17 it says, Behold, thou art called a Jew. You know why he says you are called a Jew? Because this is after the cross, and was he a Jew to God? No, no, no respecter of persons. He said, Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law. Rest. If you rest on something, what's that mean? You're done. You, you're done? Well, how about, let's do it this way. If I, uh, my porch out there is resting on posts, isn't it? What's supporting it? 
Well, the, the foundation. To rest on something means you're hanging your hat on it, right? This is the thing that's holding you up. What did the Jew think was their calling card for God? The law. Oh, say, excuse me, sir, are you a part of God's chosen people? And he'd say, oh, I'm Abraham's seed. We've got the law. He might not have any idea what it says, but he said that's us, right? Mm -hmm. Rest us in the law and make us thy boast of God and knowest his will and approve of the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that thou thyself are a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. Can y'all think of anyone worse today to teach you the Old Testament scriptures than an unbelieving Jew? I'm not knocking Jews, folks. Look, I, I did this exact same thing just in a different way. But the Bible says that the Jew that doesn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ has got a problem. What's his problem? He's blind. How's he going to tell you about the light? Okay. He can't. He, uh, me and Lexi watched a movie the other night about Fanny Crosby. Well, if y'all ever want to watch some, they've got some good ones on documentaries. She's a lady that wrote about 5,000 hymns. Blessed Assurance. She's blind. <coughs> she was talking to a person and saying, describe the sunset to me. And the person said, describe it to you. She said, yeah, what's it like? And the person looked at the sunset and said, well, I don't know. She said, well, how can you not know? You're looking at it. Describe it to me. She said, well, it's, uh, uh, I don't know. And the lady, Fanny Crosby, looked towards it blind and said, it's warm. It, it's refreshed. And she went into this long explanation. This is the best explanation you ever heard of a sunset. Now, why could she see it like that? She wasn't looking through her physical eyes, was she? She was blind physically, but she was way, way more alert to things, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. The person that could physically see never paid any attention to it, did they? Took it for granted. Took it for granted. So it says here, you're a confident, uh, you're confident that you're a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. Boy, I did a lot of preaching like this. Confident I had the truth, and I'm the one I can tell you, oh, I know about this, and yeah, I know about this, and I got it right. And the next thing says, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth and the law. Therefore, thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself. You know what he's saying there? Who's worse? Yeah, who's worse to show you the light than the one that thinks he's got light but doesn't have it? I mean, how in the world could a person that thinks he has light and doesn't have it, at least the blind person could tell you, I'm not sure, I think, but the one that thinks they have the light, what will they say? Oh no, this is how it is now, it's right. Oh, that's, that's the foolishness of walking in darkness and thinking you're in light. Keep holding Exodus and go over to uh, Matthew. I think it's Matthew 6. Yes. Matthew 6.22. He says, the light of the body is the eye. Alright, how does all physical light enter into the body? Through the eye, doesn't it? It all comes through the eye, all physical light. He said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, in other words, it's not looking in all kind of different places and distracted, looking at one, you know, uh, like Lexi's cat, cross-eyed, looking in two different directions, right? He said, if, uh, if, uh, if the, uh, therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? What's that mean? A person that thinks they've got the truth, can you convince them that they don't? Are they willing to hear anything? Are they willing to even accept that they might be wrong? Then what is that supposed light to them? It's the worst kind of darkness. He, uh, I have heard, I'll give you all an example. I have seen on menus and heard for years about white chili. Y'all ever seen white chili? Mm -hmm. hey, when I, white chili, I don't know part of that. Chili's red. I want red beans and 
you know, a white bean won't even give you gas. I don't, you know what I mean? You know, what is this about? <laughs> Me and Lexi stopped to eat somewhere, and Lexi said, ooh, white, what'd you call it, Lexi? White chicken chili. White, white chicken, chicken chili. Now, for years, I thought, I, hey, I can cook chili, boy, I'm, you know, this and that. You couldn't tell me nothing. She ordered this white chicken chili, and it's the best chili I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. What kept me from experiencing it 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. won't try it. I thought I didn't want to try it. I thought I already knew, right? Mm -hmm. Folks, that's how people approach the Word of God. People who do the same thing with their salvation. They never even hear the gospel because as soon as gospel comes up, they say, oh, yeah, 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 I know that. I find so many times that when you teach classes, there are people that are wanting to hear some fascinating doctrine or talk about deep types and all that. And hey, that's all fine for certain times. But who doesn't want to hear the gospel? <laughs> you know, when you start talking about the gospel, I had a man, man one time at a conference. It, it shocked me at the time. He got his pen and his paper out like this and I was about to start. And he got like that and I started preaching. And he looked and it was like, he closed his book and just sat back like that for 45 minutes. I don't know the people at that conference. What would you preach? The cross. You, you preach, preach the cross, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Folks, knowing Daniel 9 ain't going to save anybody. I could spend my life studying prophecy. Nobody saved by studying prophecy. You can figure out every type in the Old Testament. Unless you see those types all represent the death of Christ on your behalf, you ain't done nothing. Right. So be careful about the light that's in you. Luke said, be careful what you hear. In other words, we hear things and we take it in. No, be careful what you hear. All right, back over to Exodus. There's a beautiful example of this in Exodus 14. Is that you? Yes. Yeah. Right. All right, Exodus 14. God has come and he's going to lead these people out of darkness, isn't he? You know what's great? God gave them a cloud to lead them, didn't he? And don't, it wasn't a cloud. Look, me and you think clouds like cloud in the sky, don't we? It wasn't a cumulonimbus cloud. <laughs> well, it wasn't, but in our minds, that's how we see it. As soon as I read this, I immediately think about a picture I saw in my little catechism thing when I was little. It was those people coming out of there, a whole bunch of them carrying all this stuff, and there was a little, like a thunderstorm cloud in front of them. All right, when they translated the Bible, how, when you, if you were, uh, uh, say this, if you had been out there in Egypt and this thing appears in the sky, what would you call it? There wasn't no word for it, was there? He, when they detonated that first nuclear bomb, I heard a man use this example, and that's great. What do they call that thing that rises up? A mushroom cloud. A mushroom cloud. Is it a mushroom? No. Nope. Is it a cloud? No. It ain't neither one. They just used words that would give you the picture. Folks, this was God revealed himself in the glory of this thing. I don't understand it, but this is what he did. Now watch what it says. Verse 20 says, or verse 19. The angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. The very thing that lead them, led them, is now going to defend them. Now watch, this is God. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, to the Egyptians, but it gave light by night to these, so that a one came not near the other all night. Can y'all imagine you got one cloud? Look, I don't know how to draw it, so I'm going to draw it like this. I'll just draw a cloud. Right? You've got a cloud like this, and to one group, you got a group of people under here. Now, let's just put them here. Here's all these people, right? And to one group, it's darkness. But to the other group, the same cloud is what? Light. Now, what's that sound like to y'all? That's that book, folks. That's the leadership of God. Who did He give us to teach us and lead us through the Scripture? The Holy Spirit. Without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you know what this book will be? Darkness. Darkness. You can memorize it. You won't know what it's talking about. You can study it till the cows come home and yet the truth won't come to you. Look, I know about this firsthand. You, you can learn other languages. You can learn this book in other languages. And guess what? That'll just confuse you more. Until the Holy Spirit shows you the truth of this, it'll be darkness unto you. 
uh, Isaiah prophesied, he said there that there was a time was coming for Israel. He said they're drunk, but they ain't drunk on wine. Drunk on religion. They were drunk on religion. Guess what he said their drunkenness led them to do? What's every drunk do? Falls down and stumbles, don't they? Israel stumbled because they had a book that they couldn't read. They said the, the priest there would be like a drunk and they'd bring the book to him and say, read this book to me. And the priest would say, I can't read it. I don't understand it. Folks, I had this literally happen to me. Literally. I went to a priest with a question and he couldn't answer it. Come back the second time and he told me, if you don't put that book away, it'll drive you crazy. He understood something. That book was darkness to him, wasn't it? Why was that book such darkness to him? Because he, he's lost and had that false light. He had a light of the system in there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So then the exact same light can be to one person light to another person darkness. Now flip over to Psalm. Go to Psalm 6. No, Psalm 4. I'm sorry, I'm giving you all the wrong one. Psalm 4. got another old word coming up here. I know I'm always telling y'all what you ought to study and I don't mean it to sound that way, but it, it, I don't know if y'all are like me. There'll be times when you sit down and just it, one of the hardest things is what to teach on. What, hey, what, what did you teach? You know what I mean? Just come in. So you sit down, you pray, and you wait, you pray, and you wait. But y'all look up the word countenance and study that one and look at all the things. It, there's some great things about it. Now in Psalm 4, verse... Uh, uh, verse 5, he says, Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. How in the world does he have a sacrifice of righteousness tied to trust in the Lord? That's what the Lord wanted. The Lord gave Israel back here the law which had all them sacrifices for sin in it. And what were they for? To show them sin means death. Folks, every, every day of their life, animals were bleeding and dying, weren't they? And for what reason? That's what sin brings, death. And what did Israel do with those, the death of those animals? They turned it into glory. Yep. Instead of going, oh, no, this poor animal's got to die again because I've done this. They come walking in with the animal. Look at this one. Lord, i got a 15-pounder for you today. And they come in like that, right? So did they turn that which should have been light into darkness? Yep, yep. Well, you come over here in the Bible in the New Testament, it says God didn't even want those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. said He had no delight in all of that. What did it say He wanted? The sacrifice of praise. More than anything in this world, you know what that book tells me God wants? To be believed. He wants me and you to believe Him. What more dishonorable thing could we do to God the Father than to not believe Him? What did He say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now, everybody in the world knows John 3.16, don't we? Okay? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, can you say that verse like this? I'll just use Chris. Can Chris, can you in your mind take that verse and say, you know, I look at that verse and I have such assurance because I'm whosoever. For God so loved Chris Corsentino that God gave His only Son for Chris Corsentino and if Chris Corsentino believes, Chris Corsentino shall be saved. Now, ain't that what the verse says? Mm -hmm. Are you whosoever? Mm -hmm. All you got to do is plug your name in there. See, is this me or am I fighting this? Am I still struggling to believe it? If you are, go to the Lord with it. Say, Lord, I've got a little, uh, I'm trying to believe this and my, help me, Lord, help me see this. Go to him in sincerity and ask him. Now he says in the next verse, There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. What is a countenance? It's your look. It's, it, it's many times translated face. Your countenance. He, you look around, okay, I, there'd be time, yesterday, I'll give you an example. I looked over at Lexi and I said, oh, you're hungry. She said, what? I said, you hungry? <laughs> what do you mind? I said, we're going to get something. <laughs> what am I, what's happening? 
I saw in her countenance she's hungry. Y'all seen them snicker commercials? <laughs> but I, you learn that, and that's I got. Look, I do the same thing about other stuff. I'm not picking on her. I'm just saying in her countenance I could see something. Right? Does our face show something? Where does Paul say the gospel shines in the face of Jesus Christ? That don't mean me and you've got to figure out what his face looked like. We know him by this book. Yeah. You know what his face looks like? Mercy and mm -hmm. kindness yeah. and sacrifice. Grace. grace. Thank you, Chris. Love. Someone says, what does Jesus Christ look like? Well, let me draw you a picture. He looks like this right here. That's what Jesus Christ looks like. Love. And, love. and how would you and I know that except God revealed himself in the face of Jesus Christ? So when he says God's countenance is going to be our light, what did God do? What is the light? Christ. And what did he say back here? Let there be light. That's like God said, let there be a Messiah. And it started to take place. Now, in order for there to be a need for Christ, what else was necessary? Darkness. People needed to be redeemed. Folks, God's almighty. If he didn't want man to fall, he just stuck his hand down there and stopped it. He could have not created him in the first place. Man was created to be redeemed so that you and I would need a redeemer so that our redeemer would receive all glory for all time. Does that make sense? Now, imagine one of us not wanting to believe on him. You're not only denying the one that died for you, you're not serving the only purpose which you was even created. Then what use would God have for you? No. I, you know, it's amazing to me that people act like, if you won't believe, then God will discard you. <coughs> I was taught that. There ain't a lick of truth to that. You're born discarded. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, we're born in sin, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said, He that believeth not is condemned already. The only way you can become uncondemned is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, the peace of God that passes all understanding will come to you if you will just believe, there is my Savior. Right. Bless God, He took care of this load. I've tried all my life to overcome it and I can't. I see now why my Savior came into this world. And from that moment forward, you won't ever be able to be the same. You'll still be a sinner. You'll still fail. You'll still fail at the same things. But there will be a desire in you. And God operates in the desire. Who put the desire there? He did. Folks, this is God's doing. Now go over to, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, go to Job 37. There's a great one over there. Job, yep, right before Psalms is Job 37. <laughs> okay, tell you what, let's do. Let's start in, uh, oh, verse, uh, 15. Or 14 would be better. Hearken unto this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. What is the most wondrous work of God Almighty? Creation. Oh, cross. Creation is second. Cross is first. Why was creation created? For the cross. The cross is first. Folks, that's the most. You ain't never met anybody that would die for their enemy, have you? Me and you wouldn't die for our enemy. We'd gladly watch him die. Y'all know you had someone that had treated you horrible all your life? I think about a, a, a slave. Imagine a slave back in the Roman Empire. He's got somebody that has beat him and burned him and tortured him and sold his kids and just treated him horrible. He comes in one day and the guy falls over and has his having a heart attack. Y'all think that slave would revive him? Amen. I'd reach over and put my foot on his throat if nobody was looking. That's the old man, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Who in the world would want to revive this person? Who would die so that he could live? I sure wouldn't. Would you? Mm -hmm. Now let's make it worse. Who would give your only son to die so that he could live? Now we talk about the love of Jesus Christ and dying for us, but what did God the Father do? He gave His Son for you. Y'all think about love. You've never known love like this. The Bible says He did it. 
Now it says in verse uh, uh, 15, Dost thou know when God disposed them, the works, and caused the light of his cloud to shine? The light of his cloud? Do y'all reckon this man knew about that? All right, now next it says, Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him, which in perfect, is perfect in knowledge, how thy garments are warm when he quieteth the earth by the south wind? Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? In other words, you're going to tell me about uh, what you think God's doing without God having revealed anything to you. You're going to describe God to me. Where were you when God created these things? Now, how is it that you and I can talk about them and know that we, could, we got the book, don't we? Next, he says, verse 19, Teach us what we shall say unto him. For we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. You know what that verse says? The natural man receiveth not the things of God. They're foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. In other words, one more time. Teach us what we shall say unto him. We can't order our speech. Which one of, me, which one of us in a lost condition could say something to God to, to prompt him to do anything? He already did what he's going to do for you, folks. He sent his son. Now it says next verse. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a, a man speak, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men see not the bright light which is in the clouds. But the wind passeth and cleanseth them. Now this is just nature he's using. But look what God did. Did God create all things? Yep. All things created to the glory of Christ. Yep. Here's a fabulous one. Sun's up there, the light, right? And dark clouds move in, and what happens to the light? It's covered. It's covered. And yet, you know what a slight east or north wind will do? Move it over. Do you all know what the word for spirit means? Wind. It's the wind. Pneuma. If you've got a pneumatic tool that runs on the air, doesn't it? Think about the light. Was the light there all alone? Did God allow clouds to come in? Yeah. Who's the only one that can blow those clouds away? The Lord. the Lord, the Spirit of God. Folks, we're all born in darkness and we'll die in darkness unless we allow the Spirit to blow it away and let the light shine. He, the Bible says that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know what that tells me? That it wasn't the day, a lot of people talk about the day they were saved like this. The Lord stepped in, blew away the cloud, and the light shined 100% ever since. That ain't how weather works. How does it work? It comes and goes. He, he blew and a little light came through, didn't it? And then darkness rises up and it blows again. Folks, this is the Spirit of God leading us. Me and you are brought into darkness for what purpose? That the light might shine. Y'all read the book of Job. Job was, hey, he was God's man, just doing fine, wasn't he? And who said, did Satan say, Lord, let me have Job? Or did God say, have you considered Job? <laughs> Y'all see what happened? God says to Satan, have you considered Job? Did God allow all this horrible darkness to come into Job's light? Yeah. Uh, his life. At the end of his life, what happened? God made it shine. And what, happened? what did the light shine at the end? Double. He got a double portion, didn't he? Mm -hmm. he uh, me and Lonnie was talking a minute ago about the, uh, the Fanny Crosby lady I was just telling y'all about. She, she was blind from a baby, and she wrote a bunch of beautiful uh, songs. And back then, in the, in the middle 1800s, they called them popular songs. Like I guess that's where pop music comes from. Just little old songs that today you'd sing like nursery rhyme songs. And she said they played them in bar rooms and all. Um, like, it, it, you all know, just that kind of music, right? Well, she was battling over her salvation. She had no surety about it. She was just uneasy. She went to a, a, what they called a tent revival kind of thing, and the man just preached a bunch of goofiness, and she left more confused. She went one night, the lady said, why don't you come go with me tonight? She said, I know they're having that tent revival and all that, but we're having an eva evangelistic, I can't say the word, we're having a gospel meeting, okay? She said, we're, we're going to spread the gospel tonight. She went, and guess who preached to her? The preacher preached, did, didn't take. When she got done, some little old lady come and sat down next to her and was talking to her, and guess what happened? She got hit right between the eyes. The Lord blew, and the clouds clear, and the light shined through. 
She immediately couldn't write those songs anymore, but she had an incredible talent. So she's working in an orphanage and just doing what she could, and slowly, day by day, the Lord's using her. You ain't never met somebody. Even Saul of Tarsus didn't have the turnaround that people credit him to. People will teach you that Saul of Tarsus, when the light shine, never sinned again. Not in this Bible. That man struggled for a long time. Obedience, disobedience. Obedience, right? So Fanny Crosby's friend said, you need to write songs about the Lord. You've got such a great talent. Any talent we've got, we need to serve the Lord. So she said, well, I don't know. And she just didn't feel convicted about it. And she tried. She wrote a couple and it just, you know, nothing was working. She got married a, a, another blind man and had a baby. The baby got sick. Of, was it cholera, Lex, or something? She got, the baby got sick and died. The death of that baby seemed like it was going to crush her. But you know what it did instead? Inspired her to write. Inspired her to write. She started writing from a place deep down inside of her that she didn't know existed. The death of that little child moved her in a way that she had no idea. Even in that darkest hour when it seemed like she, this, the world is over, I just can't, don't even want to live. You know what she wrote? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. You ever thought about that? What brought that on? Darkness. Did further light come out of that darkness? Yep. He, uh, oh boy, y'all, I love these old hymn songs. Remember uh, Horatio Spafford? My favorite one is, It is well. It is well with my soul. He was a businessman in Chicago. He saved. And he had a wife. He was successful. Everything's going good. He had rental properties and all. We all have all heard of the great Chicago fire. Mm -hmm. Burnt down everything he had. Lost everything. Wasn't no insurance in. Lost it all, right? He's got to start over. Well, I'm sure that was dark and depressing, but he didn't renounce God and all that. Kind of, he just started getting on, come up with another plan. He said, look, honey, there's an opportunity in England for us. I've got a friend over there. We've got an opportunity. Things were bad in Chicago. They had a banking collapse right after that. So he put his wife and his children on a steamer and sent them steaming for England. He was going to tidy up some loose ends and go behind them. Halfway between America and England, guess what happened? Storm blew up and the boat went down. Guess who made it off? His wife. All their children died. Now, folks, that's, you imagine that poor lady? And the lady sent a, a famous telegram. It, it's famous now. All she could muster up in the telegram, she said, I alone am left. She sent the kids. They lost their kids. He immediately quit what he was doing, jumped on a ship to head over there. When they got in the same place, the man driving the ship said, this, this is where the other one went down. Horatio Spafford walked out on the deck in the evening and was looking, sure, tears and crying. That's dark, isn't it? He sat down and he wrote, It is well with my soul. What did he mean? Lord, you are sovereign. If you saw to take my children, you know best. I don't understand it, but I know you do all things well. And he started writing that song. Y'all read the words when you get a chance. Mm -hmm. The Lord has regarded my helpless estate huh? and gave his son for my own soul. What, what happened to the man? He got folks in that incredible darkness, God's light shine through more. And this is what's supposed to be going on with us. And who does this? The Spirit of God. The Spirit blows the darkness away. Did God ever promise you eternal light on a daily basis? We are in the light, but what's it going to be like in this world? He said in this world, you're going to have trouble and despair. Is that just because God can't overcome the world? No. He said, I already overcame it. Why is it then? It's by design, folks. God is doing His work. This is what it's about. Flip over to Proverbs uh, uh, 4, I think. David said that he forever wanted to walk, walk in the light of God's countenance. Can y'all picture David when the Lord was, when he was walking with the Lord, just in the brightness shining on him? Y'all know when you get saved, David also wrote, he said, in any sense, Lord, in a time of despair, he wrote, give me back that same feeling I had the day I trusted you. 
You remember what it was like when you saw that your sins were paid for? Yeah. All of a sudden, it's just you can't describe it, can you? But that feeling doesn't last. Someone tells you, oh, then you're not really saved. Just ignore that foolishness. <laughs> David said, bring that back, Lord. Why? Because we're in this world of darkness. And what comes over us? The clouds. And who do we have to depend on to blow them away? The Lord. The Lord. Mm -hmm. What's the only way you and I can access the Spirit of God? Right, right in, here. in this book. Folks, walk in this book and you're walking with the Lord. Trust Him. Turn from this book and I guarantee you, you turn from the light and what comes on you? Dark. Darkness. Now watch what Proverbs 4 says. Verse 18. The wisest man that ever lived said... But the path of the just. Now, before we go any further, what's the only way anyone has ever been just in God's sight? By faith. faith. Then what's he really saying here? The path of the saved. You know, there are people that teach, I, I once believed this, that nobody was saved till after the cross. Huh? How in the world could I believe that? I did. Uh, matter of fact, I know a man preached a sermon. 8,000 lost believers on the day of Pentecost and after. He, I, I listened not long ago. I heard that for a second and I thought, I didn't think, you idiot, you fool. I don't think that at all. I'm thankful for the man. He preached the gospel and I heard it. I thought, how sad. He, he never got past that. The Lord never revealed that to him. I don't know why. That's his ministry. That's not the point. The point is, those people on the day of Pentecost is just as saved as me and you. How, who did Paul use as his great example of salvation? Abraham. Matter of fact, the writer of Hebrews goes all the way back to Abel, doesn't he? They were saved by faith. Now, the blood hadn't been shed yet. They didn't go immediately into the presence of God, but they went into paradise. Went up later, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, said, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. Now, if a light shines more and more, how do we say that? Brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter. He, Chris gave Lexi a flashlight, and it's got two settings on it. It's got all these LED lights in it, and i got to see this thing every so often. I think I, if I doze off, I think I woke up on Round Island out there with the lighthouse because she's out there looking for that cat. That thing will shine like nothing you've ever seen out there. But you know what? One night... She hit that second switch. It'll shine brighter. It shines more and more, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What is a, the life of a saved person? What is it supposed to be like? Light the light. It gets brighter and brighter. What's the only way a light can get brighter? Mm -hmm. At the same time, the darkness has got to be there. It's got to get darker, doesn't it? I, I told y'all a while back that I, I a verse... Y'all ever had a verse that just grabbed you and it affects you? And I know y'all have. You wouldn't be here. John the Baptist said, talking about the Lord, He must increase. I must decrease. Did He mean that one day that would happen? How, as you learn more and more about the Lord, as His light shines through that Scripture and in your heart, what do you see your own self? Less and less. Folks, the man that wrote Amazing Grace, slave trader, right? Slave trader wrote, Amazing Grace that saved a wretch like me. He didn't write that on the boat trading slaves. He wrote that later preaching all England. You say, well, you shouldn't be a wretch anymore. Was he? Still was. What was he seeing about himself? He was a wretch. Y'all think about Saul of Tarsus. This is the best example. Saul said... Hey, I'm, I'm the least of the apostles, didn't he? Mm -hmm. A couple years later, he said, you know what? I'm not even that good. I'm the least of the saints. Chief of the sinners. At the end, he said, I'm chief of sinners. Do y'all think Saul was becoming more and more sinful in his lifestyle every day? Mm -hmm. What was he doing? He was becoming more and more aware of the light. And that light shined down in him, like that microscope I told y'all about, shines down into a deep, dark place. Does anyone in here know where is the darkest place on the face of the earth according to that book? A man's heart. The human heart. Now that might scare you for a minute, but that's the truth. Is there any bottom to it? Let the light shine in there. You know what you'll find? Y'all ever... Uh, 
Some might, oh, it was mad he was telling me. Hey, you know, you, a lot of times clean, you're in a hurry, you don't move stuff. What happens when you spring clean, as they say? Dirty. Boy, you turn on the lights and open up all the windows and raise all the blinds, and what do you find out? I Man, this is worse than I thought, isn't it? <laughs> he, Matt, he said, well, clean this and clean that. And I said, but hey, I moved this, this, and this, and it was horrible, right? Well, it had been there all along. What did she do? Turn the light on it. She shined the light on it. See, as the light shines, the filth comes out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I can remember when I first got saved, the fact of me not wanting to study and preferring to watch a TV show, that didn't bother me. It didn't bother me at all. I thought, hey, I'm just watching a TV show. I ain't hurting anybody. Now, when I, if I feel like I don't want to study or want to do it, it deep down the it, 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 it does. You say, well, that you're getting out of hand. Well, I hope I'm getting out of hand. I hope I'm getting out of my hands anyway. hope I'm getting into the hand of the Lord. Now, I'm not trying to tell you all I'm making some big leaps and bounds. No, not at all. To whom much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. So as we learn the word, I don't mean that also like I've been given much. I mean this. As more is given, what happens? More is, more. more is expected, but at the same time, guess what? Less is expected. How do I mean that? What do you, when you get saved, what do you expect to do in your flesh? You think you're going to clean? What did Paul try and do? Keep the law. Folks, Paul said, I'm going to walk in the law now. And what did he say the law did to him? Slew him. That's after salvation. Slew him. Folks, the law slews me daily. First commandment says, I'm the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Stop. Just stop. I don't want to read anymore. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Someone would say, are you an idolater? Well, I don't have any uh, Buddhas, but I got other idols. Food. Hey, what will I put before God? That's an idol. Y'all want to know the worst idol I've got in my life? You're looking at it. Flesh. You, I put the flesh before the things of God. I'm not that, folks. That ought not be, should it? No. What did Jesus Christ do with His flesh? He didn't put it before nothing, did He? He sacrificed it. And again, someone would say, "Oh, wait a minute." Now you're telling me you want to be like Jesus Christ with all my heart. I want to be like Him. I know I never will be, but that don't stop me from wanting to be. And again, someone would say, well, this is getting out of control. No, this is what Paul told us. Y'all flip over to Philippians chapter 2. To let the light shine more and more unto a brighter day means just exactly what it says. In Philippians 2. Verse 5. We better back up to 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Now, y'all don't think for a minute that strife is just arguing. It is not. Strife is striving. You striving for anything? We all strive, don't we? Yep. He, you strive, look, we, we might be striving to, uh, it, it doesn't matter. If you're striving, you're, you're reaching out, you're stretching to, to reach a goal, right? He says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. What, if, what kind of glory is vain glory? It's empty. You know, everything me and you do in our flesh, what do we say is going to happen to it over here at the judgment seat? Burn, burn, up. burn up. So let's say I'm striving to... All right, I told y'all earlier about going on a diet, right? Now, does the Bible teach me that I ought to be moderate in what I'm eating? Yeah, yeah. right? But what if I'm doing it in order that I can look better to so-and-so? Shallow. That's shallow and vain, right? But what if I'm doing it in order that I don't have a heart attack and leave Lexi here to fend for herself? You see the difference? What if I say this? Well, Lord, I don't really want to have a heart attack and come to see you. I'd rather come to see you without having to go through the heart attack. But if you're going to leave me here on this earth, I'd rather be able to preach the gospel, right? I would rather be able to preach the gospel than to be sick. Does that make sense? Now, y'all think about, do me and you really think that way all the time? Me and Wayne were talking earlier about we just have all our lives ate what we wanted. 
We all do that, don't we? He, and I don't, I don't know what that, exactly how far that goes, but you and I do things that we want to do, and then later the effects are felt, and me and you start to think about the effects, don't we? Anything that you and I do that's not to the will of God, whose will is it to? Yes. It's ours. It's self-will. Now that doesn't mean that we're not going to do it. It means that God's trying to make us aware of it, isn't He? He, uh, I'm trying to think of another. Okay, uh, I, I, Wayne never got you, Wayne. Let's say Wayne's doing something and he's doing it for the benefit of his children, his his family, his grandchildren, right? Then is Wayne doing that in order that he would obtain something or that someone else would profit? Someone else. Someone else. Now that's an easy example. I use Wayne because he's about the most giving, kind person I know. Wayne's always been that way. Watch what it says here and then use this. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. What's that mean? You treat people better than you preach yourself. Yeah. Had y'all know anybody like that? I knew. I know some yeah, folks I like that. I'm like telling y'all about one Wayne. I know he's like that. Now watch the next verse. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I had someone tell me one time that that meant, well, I'm just trying to get what God said. He's got it, and I'm looking on it. That's what he's saying. He's saying, put the other man before yourself. Now the next verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That's the mind we're supposed to have. What's, what's have this mind mean? That attitude, right? Okay, the same, we we'll just stay with the same example. Wayne sacrifices something for Amanda's sake, right? Amanda just told me a while ago, she said, I'm going to need to miss work this day and this day because I can go, well, what's Amanda doing back? She's giving back. Y'all see what this produces, what it causes? Now, what causes Amanda to want to give up pay to go with Wayne? Love. For Wayne. love. Do y'all think that's just an old fleshly love? No, no folks, that, that's not... A, you say, well, this is just normal family stuff. This happens. Yeah, it happens, but that ain't what's happening here. It ain't what's happening at all. I know what's happening because I can see it and I can read about it in a book. What's causing a person to want to think this way? Light shining. It's the light shining. Y'all know as the light shines, we see what we're supposed to be. Watch the next verse. Christ made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You mean Jesus Christ obeyed right up until the point that his flesh died? Mm -hmm. Did he say, let this mind be in you? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about killing yourself for somebody, although if you love them, you, you, you might would do that. What we're talking about is sacrifice, isn't it? Sacrifice of what? Self for the benefit of who? Others. Others. And why? All others or primarily what others? Same. For your brothers and sisters in Christ. Folks, a husband and a wife can have a relationship and it can be the best on earth, but it ain't approached the kind they can have when they're both in Christ. A father and a daughter, same thing. A son and his dad, same thing. Those relationships that are in Christ go beyond because who begins to work? Christ does. And is it all going to happen there at one time? Mm -hmm. Boom, this is all just done? No. Nope. There's going to be darkness and failings and falling backs and tripping and fumbling. And in all your fumbling and bumbling and stumbling, know that God said in this book, He still accepts you in what you did, not because of what you did, but who does He see you in? Christ. In Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ died for your sins, this ain't available to you. You don't have it. You can try and imitate it, but you won't. You can try and make it look like you've got it, but those that have it will see through it. They know the difference. Okay? All right, y'all got any questions about that? Okay, we'll probably do darkness next time. All right, thank you.